Hello everybody, today we're talking about Nave, part of the new school renaissance, or how old school got its groove back. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent with my good friend Lex, and today, up in the top right corner, today we are going to talk about um, a game that a lot of people know of called Nave. Lex, tell us about Nave. Nave is a rules light OSR game created by Ben Milton and released in 2018 under a Creative Commons attribution license. You can pick it up for about $3 on a number of platforms, including DriveThruRPG and itch.io. It uses the six D&D ability scores we all know and love, but in a slightly different way, making each stat total a defense value with the second digit of that score as the bonus right so we've also got armor which works in a similar way but the numbers provided by an item rather than being rolled for uh so for example a 13 strength means a strength defense of 13 and a bonus of plus three now as you may have guessed there's a d20 resolution mechanic uh but rolls can also be entirely player facing if you want to play it that way for example, when someone swings a sword, they roll to hit armor, as you would have guessed, but if a player is the one being attacked, they may choose to instead roll a d20, add their armor bonus, and get higher than the attacker's strength defense, and that means they have dodged the blow. Now, saves are a d20, um, trying to get above 15, uh, rolling with relevant stat bonus, uh, but when a monster is involved, uh, they can either be an opposed roll or the player can try to beat the monster's relevant score. So like rolling a d20 plus your dex bonus against an enemy wizard's intelligence defense to dodge a spell, right? Uh, oh, also, uh, do you like designer notes? Because gosh, the name's got a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> you're never going to be unsure what the rule intent of this game is. The core concept of Nave is that the items you carry define what your character can do. In fact, outside of ability scores, they're really the only mechanical thing that does that. Uh, as such, you've got a simple but very robust slot-based inventory system, and even item degradation for weapons and armor. Looking to be a fighter? Get that sword. Want to be a rogue? Pack some lockpicks. Interested in magic? Stock up on spellbooks. Uh, now, Jordan... Classes in many RPGs sort of can give characters a narrative theme. So in a classless game like this, um, do you think that it disrupts the narrative of the game when you can switch sort of your character theme between trips to town? Yeah, I actually, I think I do. Because um, in an RPG, are we really separating um, my personality from my class? Like... Uh, especially when you're learning RPGs, wouldn't you be like, I'm the like edgy rogue or I'm this, like, it's almost later on that you would, uh, like, I'm going to be the angry barbarian. And if I'm the angry barbarian and then we go back to town and I put on my healer jacket, it kind of defeats the purpose of being the angry barbarian maybe. But, uh, this, this almost feels like a, Maybe I'm thinking too much of Final Fantasy XIV, where you can switch your class on the fly. But I, I think it would. If, But are people telling really narrative games with this? That's the other mm, that's question. True. Yeah, Is this just argument. a dungeon crawl? <laughs> yeah, and maybe that's all it's meant to be, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the uh, six ability scores do give you a little bit of that, right? But they don't. they only go so far, and that's the only thing that remains consistent, or that has to remain consistent, right? Um, I think maybe the idea is it's like, oh, you you like using these items. You like this loadout. And as you play, you sort of might tweak it to fit more of how you see your character. But then you're going to stay with that. And I, I assume that's the intent here. And that's fine and probably works really well in play. Again, neither of us have played this game. So who are we to say? But uh, but yeah, no, I think I, I think I agree that like with a classless game like this, you, the fact that you can just go back to town and be like, well... I've got like a 13 strength of 13 intelligence, so why don't I just try stocking up on spellbooks instead of weapons and armor this time, and I'll just be a wizard instead of a fighter. And I guess just, I didn't think about yeah. that, but you're right. Like, you could have a low intelligence, uh, and you're not going to necessarily play a wizard, even though that's an option, I assume. 
Yeah, but it's like as long as you have uh some amount of bonus to it, you're still gonna be like okay, at least at low levels. Okay, and then yeah. you can and then you can choose when you do advancement to spec a certain way with your ability scores, and maybe that encourages you to fall into a niche, right? So maybe it's only like that for really low levels, and then as you go, you get better or mm. more specific. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that's good. Clocking in at four pages, Nave is a light RPG even by OSR standards. Part of this is because it relies on compatibility with other OSR systems to fill in a lot of the gaps. Uh, for instance, we don't get monsters. Instead, we get a short conversion rule so GMs can take any old BX critter and easily drop it into Nave. Um, this really plays to the strength of the OSR, I feel, seeing as most games under that umbrella are somewhat compatible, but usually there's like one or two rules tweaks that'll try and trip you up if you're just trying to mash them all together. Uh, Nave makes it very clear that you're supposed to use other material with it and exactly how to do that throughout the text. So this kind of leaves me wondering... Um, is the idea of kind of leaving this all up to the game master, is that good or bad? It's flexible, but if you're a new player or a new GM, having a game put down in front of you that says, hey, pick up some other material in order to run this, <laughs> right? Is that is that too much of a detriment? How do you feel about that? Um, I It feels weird. Like, I feel like I'm, I, I do like this game. But I would say that that is a detriment. Like, Nave to me doesn't necessarily feel like I'm going to go to a store and pick up Nave and go home and play it that night. Mm. Nave is the, like, GM's tinkering uh, system. And so I've been actively playing BX d d or Old School Essentials or even d d 5e. And I have these monster books at home. I have other resources at home, even other OSR resources and stuff. And I'm going to take those and just like incorporate it into my game. Um, you know, it, it it's only what f you said, four pages, five pages, seven, pages. seven. Yeah. So it's only seven pages, but it's also no art. Like it's all just text and it's uh, small text and small text. <laughs> so like yeah. there's a lot more there than like, I don't know, like you say, it's like it's small for OSR standards. And then our our. Our friend Diego has like RPGs on a business card. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll drop that. I'll say our friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we should review those at one point. <laughs> that would be funny. But, uh... but I, I, um... I think that it should have included more, like even a couple sample monsters on how to make your own monster. Uh, mm. As opposed to conversions for things that it's assuming you already have. And yeah. I think he's right in assuming that people who are reading this probably already have other resources, but at the same time, you're not creating an inviting environment for new players. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, and I, I, I like, maybe it's a perception on my part, but when I see something that's this short, I think, oh, this must be geared to new people because it's really easy to pick up and play. And yeah. that's one of the principles of it. But unless you're, familiar with the systems already and the scene it actually is kind of hard to pick up and play like yeah. we were talking about but i don't know but yeah i don't know if that's a bad thing like i think if you're someone who's already in the scene and you're just like man i just wish i had something that i could pick up and play and i wouldn't have to worry about a lot of rule stuff it it does serve that purpose really well mm -hmm. so it's yeah it kind of depends on what angle you look at it from it, it is awesome, I will say. And a lot of times I think uh, people learn RPGs by having somebody else teach them. Like, I don't know how many people are just picking up anything, like Knave or something, and they're reading the rulebook to be like, I'm going to learn how to DM. Like, there are those people out there, but they're going to start with what is well known, like Dungeons and Dragons, instead of something like Knave. Like, and so a lot of those people like it's a fair assumption to say that they already have those resources and yeah. this for new players like i would love to run this for new players like people who don't know anything about rpgs but that's the thing is like i know things about rpgs i can make those monster stats work i think so. yes i think that's the important caveat if you're a dm who's already in the scene this is for you yeah if you're a player who's never done anything before it's perfect for you right but you don't want to be a gm who's never done anything before 
Nave, and Milton's other title, Maze Rat, link below, uh, along with Chris McDowell's Into the Odd, are the big titles that, to me, really set the scene for a lot of the design we see today in the Rules Light OSR space, or as some games I often see with this lineage uh, are called, NSR, meaning new as opposed to, as opposed to old school renaissance. Uh, Durf, uh, which we have talked about before, and Cairn, which we should talk about, uh, immediately come to mind as owing a lot to titles like these, particularly in the way they think about inventory, their additions of stress as an inventory fill generator while adventuring feels like a great expansion of the kind of groundwork that Milton lays with this game. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the way Knave handles ability scores didn't really seem to catch on as much in the scene uh, with the snappy earth or sort of three stat system that we see in maze rats or into the odd sort of taking more of a foothold uh, so i guess my big question is because we're you know like i said nave came out in 2018 so it's been a while uh, and we've talked about other newer games that are very inspired by it is Nave worth using today, or are the predecessors just simply better options because they've improved on the formula? Oh man, that's a that's a tough and a really good question. Um, I feel <laughs> I feel like we're gonna does, say yes, and then this will this whole thing will just be like Nave sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Uh, is really like a quick caveat question though. Uh, does like Cairn and some other games that are kind of like inspired by Nave, do they use six abilities? Like does Cairn specifically, I guess. Well, no, that's why I was saying like the six abilities is the thing that hasn't caught on. Yeah, so Cairn sort of, doesn't yeah. is what I try I'm trying to ask. Yeah. You. Like Cairn yeah, yeah, yeah. has like four, Karen is three, three stats. Three stats. Yeah. Okay. Even Maze Rats is three stats, so mm -hmm. uh I I I guess I will do a follow up idea with you where i will say uh is it worth playing bx D, D to help you understand 5e and play a better 5e game and this my, is my i would say yes yeah i would say yes no, it totally is yes <laughs> and so i think playing knave also would be really good and then using that fundamental and even if you've already been like hey i've been playing cairn and all this other stuff or like i don't know I'm playing my nth into the odd, like, rehash of a game, but there's something to be said about still going back and playing it um, in its original form. And so totally. I would, yeah, I think, I think it's totally worth playing. Like, Yeah, even, and because it's so, especially if, as we said earlier, if you're already in the scene and you know a lot of uh, the other material, it is really easy to pick up and play and, and run, right? So... Yeah, even if it's just for a one shot, seems like it would be totally worth it because then like maybe you do find something of real value in the way ability scores work in this mm -hmm. the or the way they do defense and bonus, which is, you know, like I was saying, very different than a lot of other games do it. Uh, the fact that you can have all the roles be player facing, which is uh, I got to admit, actually, something that I see in like Powered by the Apocalypse games most frequently, I don't see it in OSR games very frequently. So see it in this. Oh, where the really players roll defense instead of like players yeah, roll where, all the dice. Yeah, they can yeah. they can roll everything if that's how yeah. you want to play it. So I think trying out an OSR game that does that, even if you find in the end that might not be for you, is probably worth your time because it's so easy to do if you're already familiar with the OSR. Yeah. And I will also say, like, if I, I feel like I'm I'm not picking on Karen, but Karen's the one that I know that like is directly inspired by this, <laughs> I feel. Um but when you're reading like something that was inspired by Nave, you're limiting yourself to being inspired by Nave. You know, like you might get inspired, but what Karen did, but like if you read these rules, all of your sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I should have poison take up inventory slots. And then you have your own little OSR rule that you're taking and running off with, mm. you know? And that's yeah. another important reason to play. And yeah. And it's like $2 and. You're gonna pl you're gonna learn it in five minutes and generate characters in another five minutes and then play a game like do it. It's awesome. <laughs> you know, I think even though maybe it's not something we explicitly talk about, I think it's sort of an underlying theme of a lot of these uh, shows that we do is if you're into games, especially if you're into game mastering, 
and if you're into the osr you're probably into like checking out different mechanics and seeing yeah. the different ways the puzzle pieces can fit together so you know if it's light if it's short if it's easy to run just do it because you might find a little mechanic that you really like and then want to tinker with or carry into another game oh i think they're great i love designer notes i'm a big black hack fan and that's the game that has like tons and tons of examples throughout it um yeah i'm into it okay well that's nave everybody you can pick it up on drive through rpg we have an affiliate link down below and let us know if you like it if you've played it or if you want uh or if you prefer one of the nave spin-offs because it is creative commons so lots of people have taken this and and altered and changed it and uh that's the beauty of the osr so like that's kind of why people play i feel is like there's always these fun new things to play with so uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.